fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Robots in Disguise 2000 Universe Toe Line from the Buzzworthy Bumblebee line of Transformers from Hasbro. So the Buzzworthy Bumblebee line is a Target exclusive, but he was also available on Hasbro Pulse for a quick minute. That's where I got mine. I believe he is sold out there on Hasbro Pulse currently, but he might go back in stock. But literally the day after I bought this from Hasbro Pulse, they had a bunch of them at local Target. So I don't think he's going to be too hard to track down if you're looking for him. But we're getting more 2000 Robots in Disguise stuff. So that's fantastic. Uh, you know, Car Robots, as it was known in Japan. I'm really a fan of that show. So I love seeing more representation from that series in the Legacy line. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, he is a repaint slash retool of Scrap Hook. So you can see the vehicle mode here on the front of the packaging. And then we have some really cool artwork of him in robot mode over here on this side. And then we have the kind of standard Buzzworthy Bumblebee packaging with Megatron and Optimus and RC and Bumblebee over here on this side. Spinning it around to the back, we get to see some cool product shots of the robot mode and the vehicle mode. And then there's the Evo Fusion gimmick they're using, a hot shot here as an example. I'm not going to do that in this video. It's exactly the same as with Scrap Hook, and I did that back in the video for Scrap Hook. So if you want to check that out, I'll put Scrap Hook, uh, the video link for him at the very end of this video. So if you want to see how the Evo Fusion stuff works, check that video out. I'm not going to go through it again, but very excited for this repaint. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, get him out of the packaging here, and we'll take a closer look. So here is Toe Line out of the packaging, and the one thing about Toe Line that just jumps out at you immediately is the color scheme, and I absolutely love it. A lot of people have compared it to like the Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine, and that's absolutely true. You have this kind of spring green, teal, orange, just a crazy bright color scheme. I've always loved it. Now back in the day, Toe Line, or Wrecker Hook as he was known in Car Robots, was a repaint of a Machine Wars toy that was kind of one of those like they did in Beast Wars where you had one piece that was kind of move and then it was spring loaded and it would do most of the transformation just using that spring loaded uh, effect. So we don't have that here and obviously he looks very different. The original toy had pretty much the entire cab of the tow truck sitting on his chest. So we don't really have that look going on here again because this is made from scrap hook, but I still think he's really cool. I mean, we have the kind of front grill of the vehicle down here as toes. We didn't have that back in the day either, but they really did nail the head sculpt. I think they did such a good job there. And again, the color scheme is just perfect. All the colors here on the chest look amazing. The Autobot symbol, the purple here also is really solid. So it's just overall this really great color scheme and it looks really, really fun on this mold. So while it doesn't look exactly like the original character from back in the day, I do appreciate that they saw the alt mode similarities and gave us this because I'm always in the market for more car robot references because I really, really enjoyed that show. Uh, now, of course, he comes with a ton of accessories that I don't have him decked out with here. So we have the hook. Now, back in the day on the original toy, the hook was where the spring loaded gimmick came into play. And so you kind of bent that up. And it would have normally sat on his back kind of like this. So I can't really replicate that, unfortunately. But I can kind of put this here on the back to kind of simulate that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, again, normally it would have been a piece like this that then rotated up. And it would have been like that. Unfortunately, I can't connect it like this. Because this is the way I would want to connect it. But I can just kind of do something like this and kind of simulate that. We have these two pieces uh, that go on the shins. They can, of course, be held in the hand as guns, or if you wanted to peg them onto the forearm, you could do that as well. For the most part, and I did this with Scrapbook as well, I just kind of pop them in the shins where they go, and I pretty much just leave them there forever. I just like the look of it filling out the leg down there, so I don't often take them off to use them as guns, but I wanted to show off that it can. You have the little shield piece, because again, this is made from a Junkion, so we've got that. You can just go ahead and peg that onto one of the arms, and then you have these pieces um, with the kind of smoke stacks. Now, again, if you want them to just be a tow truck, you could leave these off. Uh, you don't have to use them at all. But otherwise, I believe they usually peg into the wheels here. So I'll pop them on for now. So there we go. So there he is all decked out with all of his accessories. I'll be honest, I'll probably lose the shield and the exhaust pipes 
when I kind of display him because I want him to look as much like toe line or wrecker hook as possible. But I do kind of like having the hook on the back. I think that's kind of cool. Again, not 100% what he looked like, but at least it's a close enough approximation. But I just, I love the color scheme. They nailed the color scheme so much. The purple and teal and spring green and orange, it just really, really works for me. And I like that quite a bit. So before we get into articulation and everything, I wanted to just kind of do a couple little uh, group shots here. This is our entire Car Robots Legacy Collection so far. I definitely think they're going to make uh, Sideburn slash Speedbreaker out of Shatter Striker because the chest is so iconic for that. So I feel like that's definitely a pre-tool. So we should get at least one more for this uh, grouping here, but at least for now... And, and kind of the two you'd never expect, right? I mean, I think uh, Scourge or Black Convoy, you know, is a definite prominent figure. But, uh, you know, Wrecker Hook slash Toe Line, of all people, to be the first Autobot representation from this series. Uh, I love it, but I just never expected him to be the first. So here we go. Here is our entire Legacy Car Robots slash 2000 Robots in Disguise Legacy line right here. Hopefully more to come soon. And I also want to do a little comparison quick here with Scrap Hook, the mold he is based on. And you can see there's not really much different in terms of molding. I think really the only thing that's actually different is the head sculpt. Everything else is just kind of painted differently. I don't think there's any other molding that's really different. The chest looks to be the same. Uh, the crotch, the legs, the arms. Yeah, I really think it's just the head sculpt, but... It just goes to show how much an amazing paint scheme can really change the look of a toy, even if it really is exactly the same. So articulation-wise, since it is exactly the same as Scrap Hook, it's going to be the exact same articulation as Scrap Hook. The head can swivel from side to side. There's not really any other movement there. You have a swivel and a hinge here in the arm. You have a bicep swivel, which can be kind of difficult to utilize because he's got this double jointed elbow thing and it's really for transformation but unfortunately with mine this upper one is kind of loose and this pops off pretty frequently uh it's easy to pop it back on but at this joint the this piece here the, the forearm kind of comes off a couple times especially during transformation so we'll see how that goes but he does have kind of a double jointed elbow there we also have a wrist swivel we have a waist swivel. We have really nice range of motion here in the hips, so you can kick really far forward, really far back, and then really far out to the side. We do have uh, a swivel right above the knee because of the way these unpeg, um, so you really can just use that as a swivel as well as a 90 degree bend there in the knee. And then for the ankle, you have this kind of like floating ankle foot situation here so you have the ankle tilt of course and then you also have a little bit of back and front and then you also have another hinge down here because of how it transforms so you have a lot going on in the ankle down there but you can get some good poses out of them for that reason so yeah I think he looks good I really like it like I said I think I'm going to take these off for the rest of the video we know what they look like they are the same as scrapbooks but I just don't really feel like they add to the overall toe line design scheme. So I'm going to kind of leave him a little bit more basic like this to just try to capture toe line a little bit more. He was not a post-apocalyptic tow truck. He was a normal tow truck. <laughs> so, But again, I love this color scheme. So let's go ahead and we'll check out transformation here. So again, I know I keep saying it, but if you're familiar with Scrap Hook, you're going to be familiar with this transformation. It is exactly the same. I'm going to start by taking these sections here on the foot and kind of pushing them and lining them up like so. Do the same thing over here, lining that up, and then we can come and peg all of this together. Make sure that all lines up. There we go. Then we're going to rotate the waist 180 degrees. We are going to grab a hold of the shoulder pieces, these purple sections here, and you can see this pin. They are going to rotate one kind of click, about 45 degrees on that pin, and that's so that these tabs will become unpegged from the head section. 
And then this can rotate back. I'm going to go ahead and take this off, obviously. Open up these doors here on the back and wing them out to the side. And then you can actually bring this up. The head, this whole section here, is going to rotate down to finish out the windshield. And then this whole section will rotate down like this and start to form the front of the car and the, the cab there. Then we are going to kind of move these out of the way. And if you want, I guess technically you could unpeg them because they do become, or they are able to unpeg because of his like weaponizer situation that he has. So we'll rotate this all the way down, rotate this around. And then you want to kind of start to bring these in. So this can get a little tricky. Uh, you have to rotate this at that bicep swivel, 90 degrees. You have to rotate the hands up, and then you have to bring this in. So it, this is where it gets kind of tricky because you have to kind of simultaneously fold this in, this purple piece, while kind of bringing this down. This tab needs to tab in here, but you also have to do both sides at the same time so that they can tab into each other. So. There's a lot going on and there's a lot of moving pieces, but eventually you want to kind of bring these in and then tab that in. And it's just kind of difficult because a lot of clearance issues and whatnot, but it is doable. See, this is what I'm talking about. See how this one kind of popped off? And I don't know if this is stretched or what. I try to like push that in a little bit, um, but I kind of remember that happening on Scrapbook as well. So you kind of have to like bring this in so it'll peg in here, but then also peg in here and then clip back onto that. So sometimes it's a little easier just to pop that off so you can do it that way. But there you go. So once you can get all of, the, all of those moving pieces happening at the same time, then you can bring this in and you can see that there's like a clip here for this tab. And then there's a uh, spot there for this tab. So you want to kind of bring this in and click this all down into place and kind of clip that all around like so there we go and there is tow line in vehicle mode of course we have to bring the hook back in and there we go there is tow line in his vehicle mode i think it looks pretty good let me adjust the camera here so, of course, it's not going to look exactly like the original tow line. He had kind of a much smaller cab section in the front and then kind of a long bed section where the hands kind of folded in. So you would see the entire arms laying in the bed and then you'd have the hook section and you kind of pulled that hook section up on and it had like a hinge in the center and it kind of pivoted up. And as it did that, the arms would rotate around the side and I think the legs were just underneath so like the little cab would fold down, the arms would fold around, and then the leg section would come down all on that spring-loaded mechanism as you rotated this up. And then when it clicked into place, he would be basically transformed and you just kind of had to position the arms and legs a little bit. So obviously something like that, not possible here, but I do think he's pretty cool. I think they still have the color scheme coming through with the teal and the purple and the orange and obviously a lot more green here. I feel like there was more teal in the original although i don't know where they would have built it into this i feel like this makes the most sense like they put the trim in where they could where it made sense gave us the orange for the windows which again is very reminiscent of the original i will say this is kind of loose i don't know why like this forearm connection here is is kind of loose you can see it moves around um i'm not 100 percent sure and there's not really a different way i can peg that in so i mean unless i took the hook off and i tried to peg it in this way but even that one's loose so it's a shame i don't really know what's going on with that um it, it'll sit in there it's just it's very loose and i don't know if i don't know I, i'm glad they didn't paint it like the paint would have made it less loose but at the same time that would have worn off and i think that was the right call but I don't know why that's so loose in there. And again, if you want to bring these other accessories in, 
You can pop these on the side here. You can peg this underneath on this little section right there. Again, just because I want to kind of have him look as much of a normal tow truck as possible. I mean, <laughs> the cow catcher is still a little out of place and the Mad Max windows. But he really did have solid orange windows back in the day. So that doesn't bother me that much. So I feel like this is pretty good. I feel like this is as good as they could have done with this mold. I would have liked a little bit more teal, but I don't really know where they would have put it. So I think they did a pretty good job with what they had. And you do have all this teal back here as well, which is nice. But yeah, I think this is pretty successful. I like it a lot. I actually like this figure a lot. Now I understand they're starting off with a kind of futuristic Mad Max post-apocalyptic, you know, junkie on tow truck, and they're trying to do a character that was kind of a more contemporary tow truck, but for what they had to work with, I think they did a pretty great job with it. First off, they nailed the color scheme. I absolutely love the color scheme, and for me, that was a big part of this character. He didn't really have a ton of character development. I think he was in one episode uh, of the show back in 2000, 2001, but the color scheme right away jumps out at you. It screams at you. It's so fun and bright and lively. They also nailed the head sculpt. I think they did a great job with that. So I really, really just like having a representation of toe line for the shelf. And I think they did a good job with that. Uh, the only thing I would really complain about, instead of giving us these accessories again, and I understand why they do. You know, it's already in the, the breakdown in the sprue for this mold. So I get why they would just give those uh, accessories to us again. But if they could have maybe held back on those and instead given us his gun. If you're familiar with the old Machine Wars toys at all, uh, this was, like I said, it was a little tow truck and I explained how it auto-transformed. The front grill piece came off and then just had like a little barrel of a gun that flipped out. And that was his gun. And it was a big, goofy looking gun. But I loved it. And I understand that, you know, you have the grill down here being the toes. And I'm totally fine with that. I don't expect it to integrate into the vehicle mode. But if they could have just made that gun and just given it to him as an accessory, I think that would have kind of been, like, perfect. I think that would have really gone a long way. Because it was such a ridiculous gun, but it was so specific to this mold. Or the mold back in the day, I should say. And I just think that would have been a lot of fun. I understand, again, it couldn't have integrated into the vehicle. It could have pegged on the back or something. I don't know, whatever. But... Uh, I just think that would have been a lot of fun because he doesn't have, he only has melee weapons, let's put it that way. So he, I really feel like he needs a, a blaster of some kind and uh, that would have been nice to give him, even if they had to throw in something from somebody else, you know, maybe Sideswipe or somebody else's kind of generic looking blaster. But I feel like he needs a blaster of some kind and, you know, he didn't ever really use the hook. I mean, maybe like he threw it out as a line or something. It's been a minute since I've seen the show. But he had a blaster, and I feel like he needs something like that. But other than that, I'm really enjoying this. We don't have a lot of car robots slash 2000 rid representation. So I'm always happy to get another character from that series because I did really, really enjoy that. So definitely happy to get this. And definitely not a repaint I ever expected. But they nailed the color scheme. It looks so great. So... Definitely excited for this. Excited for the side swipe slash speed breaker. No, side burn. I'm sorry. Side burn slash speed breaker that will most likely be coming out sometime next year. And hopefully uh, to more car robots slash rid repaints to come. I really would love to get some of the, um, and now I'm blanking on their name. I want to say Crosscut because I think that was one of the name of the Spy Changers. There it is. The Spy Changers. I feel like you could easily do the Spy Changers maybe out of a mix of like Sideswipe or... Um, no, it would probably have to be Sideswipe. I was going to say maybe Cliff Jumper, but the robot modes wouldn't look right. So yeah, I think you could probably take the Sideswipe mold and make that into some Spy Changers pretty easily. So I would love to see that to go along with this guy. Also, I feel like you could do... Uh, Indie Heat was his Japanese name. I want to say Skids or Skid Z. I was never sure of how I was supposed to say it, but the other Machine Wars repaint was a little indie car that had the same kind of spring loaded gimmick, and he was in the show. I think his name was Skids or Skid Z. I know his Japanese name was Indie Heat. But anyway, you could do that at a Mirage pretty easily as well. So there's definitely a nice roster of repaints that they could do for the show that are pretty easily available, I would think. So, you know, here at Hasbro, please keep them coming. This guy's great. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thank you so much for watching.